<laughs> Hello and welcome back to Wonderland Asylum. We're back today with issue 94 of the Hachette Parkworks release of Titanic, the ship, the legend. Okay, so what's in issue 4's magazine? An article on wealthy Spanish newlyweds, and uh, that is Madrid, apparently, at the turn of the century. We have the group photo of the wedding, circa 1910. I believe that was their menu from a Parisian restaurant, apparently. And there is a postcard of Titanic at Cherbourg. Funnels are a bit out of scale there, aren't they? <laughs> and that's it. We're now on to the instructions. So, let's have a look at what's in the box today. Okay, so in today's box, we have some more Harry Potter screws. We have a brown envelope with, I believe, the metallic pieces in it, if it's the same as last time. Yep, we have the two tie rods, we have the crane wire, and we have the two pins. And again, just as much for my own records as anything else to make sure I haven't missed a piece. That's empty. And then in here, much the same as last time, with a couple of additions. We have pieces for the crane. But we also have these pillars for the end of the promenade deck. And there should be six of them. So, yep, we have all of them. But we'll put them to one side because we don't need them till the end. Okay, and again, ripping this bag open to make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay. So, again, this is going to be very, very similar to last time, but hopefully I'll be able to do it with a bit more, what's the word, finesse, perhaps? I don't know. So the first thing we need is this bit here that looks just like that. Now, if you see, there's one side is indented just there and has a kind of collar extending. That's the side we want to be facing up. Then we're going to take the crane cable, which looks like this. is a large hook at one side and a smaller hook at the other. And we're putting the large hook over that collar. Now I'll lie it on the mat so that can sit on. Because the next thing we're doing is taking this piece here, looking just like that which is essentially the, the connecting pin. And that is the pin piece there. And we're going to be pushing that through that hole. Okay. So line it up. And push it down, just like that. Yeah, having it sat in the mat made a, a massive difference to how easily that went in. Because if you remember last time, it was a bit of a challenge. And as you see, that leaves three pins just there. Okay. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is line those three pins up with these three holes in the crane body. So now again, the only one that's really kind of challenging is the top one because it's, it's movable, so to speak. Now just give that a squeeze and it will all go in. You shouldn't need any glue. And indeed, I did not. So that looks just like that. Now is when it gets a little more complicated. Not overly at this point. But if you remember, what we're doing is getting this piece here, which is the crane jib. Now, there's very little difference between the top and the bottom, but the bottom is completely smooth, whereas on the top you can see the sides are slightly raised. 
And what we're doing is lining that up with the two holes at the bottom of the base. And once it's all lined up, we're taking the long pin, if I can pick it up, without it falling off the edge of my mat. There we go. Now you can see there is a splined end just there. We want to keep that so it's going in last. So if we line everything up, it should push through relatively easily until it gets to that splined part. And then using the pliers we supplied last time, I'm going to just push that last bit through and it gives you a nice satisfying snap. So that should all be lined up. It is movable at the moment, but it won't be once we've put everything else together. Now this is the bit I found particularly fiddly last time. So we need the other pin, which is the same as the one I just used, but a lot shorter. And again, it is splined on one end. And what we're going to be doing is essentially my advice is put the pin in through the side first. So you know it's going to go through. Because if you're trying to push this through, because it's it is slightly too big for the hole. And if you're trying to push that through while keeping everything else lined up, see I've just done that, it's going to be very, very challenging for you. And as you remember last time, I forgot to put the hook through. So, the order it tells you to do it is to put the hook, then the washer, then the, the crane wire. I think that looks a bit off center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the hook in first. And once that's in, I'm going to push this through just a tiny bit more. Just so it'll hold itself in and give enough of a bite for me to put the, the washer in as well. Okay. So I'm going to put the hook then I'm going to put the wire so it's in the centre rather than being in the end, if that makes sense. And then the final thing I'm going to put on is the washer. Now the washer is the most challenging bit because there's very little to grab hold of all of it. And you may need to just flex these bits apart to get the washer to go in. Yeah, because the washer doesn't want to go in. Two seconds. Again, you may need to just spread the bits apart. Get the washer into that gap. Extremely fiddly, just this just this washer bit is the bit I found most difficult last time and so it's proving again here. And then push the pin through the rest of the way. And because of the gap in the hook, you should be able to push it through and hook it on without too much difficulty into the, the space that's there, just like that. There we go, that's that all in. It's not too bad, the only difficult bit, as I say, is getting the washer to engage. Now, if you'll excuse me, the clouds have kind of passed over and it's getting difficult to see. It's actually not even two o'clock in the afternoon when I'm shooting this, and it's already extremely dark. So I'm gonna put my light on. Hopefully it won't affect you too much, um, but it'll certainly give me a bit more sight. Now you can see there where the hole for the tie rod is. Now what we need to do is make sure we're using the one right one for the right side. So when it goes on it needs to be facing like that with the circle at the bottom and the rod at the top. And then this piece has a pointy bit and it has to point inwards. Now again this is the bit a lot of people had trouble with. I didn't find it too bad in the last one. See how I do today. So technically it should 
stretch over the the indentation there without too much difficulty. I found it easier when I picked it up last time, didn't I? There we go. That's that on. As I say, not too much difficulty in that. And again, take a little bit of glue. My usual glue is glue it from the range. I normally get the vacuum sealed one, but last few, well, for the last few months really, they haven't had it in stock. So I've had to make do with the small disposable ones, which don't last as long, obviously. So there we go. A little bit of glue. You can just see the hole beside the pin there, I think. Yeah, you can. And that's where that little point on the end of the tie rod goes into. There we go. And again, it goes in no bother at all. Lovely. Now on to the other side. It's the exact same thing. You can see the peg there on the end. That is where we're stretching the end of the tie rod over. Now, as someone who's worked on cars, it doesn't look much like a tie rod to me, but okay. <laughs> so again, just find what works for you. I have seen that some people have said they, they almost had to give up entirely on these side tie rods because they couldn't get them to go around the, the posts. So the first three that I've done I haven't found too too challenging but this one's providing a bit more of a resistance I suppose but There we go, that's that on as well. As long as you're patient, which isn't really my middle name, I'll be honest. <laughs> and again, another little dab of glue just beside the pin and post the end of the tie rod into its hole. And that is what that looks like. Again, I'm really chuffed with it. I know some people are using 3D printed versions or they're going to, to buy alternative versions, but I'm quite happy with the way this looks. So I'm going to leave it as it is, I do think. Okay, so the next thing we need is the actual crane base itself. And we need one of the HP screws, but I'm going to leave that bag sealed and use the spare one that came in issue 93. Just so I can get rid of the bag more or less. <laughs> yep, again, screwdriver, line up the screw, and being very, very careful, because you don't want to break any of these wee fiddly bits. It doesn't matter how you line this up at this point in time, because the crane should turn. And again, we're just gently screwing the HP screw into the bottom. In such a way that you know it's not going to come loose, but still allows the crane to turn on its base. Again, I'm really impressed with the crane. Considering that's the stock version, I mean, you can get better aftermarket upgrades and everything. I think that looks really good. I'm really impressed with it. And for the next part, we need to bring over the promenade deck that we worked on previously. As if by magic it appears. <laughs> and again, these three pegs are going into those three holes. So I find it easier to angle the crane away from where I'm pushing. Line these three pegs up and push it down. And that snapped in actually a lot more readily than the last one did. So there we go. You can see there the two cranes sitting fantastically 
on the promenade deck. Now we're not quite done yet. The last thing we need to do is to put in the six pillars I mentioned earlier and they go into one, two, three, four, five, six holes. So let's I'll glue these three holes over here first because I don't expect it to be that challenging to get the pillars in. I mean what we could have done to make it even easier I suppose was put the pillars in before we put that crane on but it doesn't make that much difference. They sit nice and flush anyway because that's the only thing I'll say is make sure these are sitting straight because they marry up with a hole on the deck above and if they're not straight they're not going to go in properly and you're going to end up with an ill-fitting boat deck I believe it is. Sorry if my head was in the way there, but you can see there that's they are nice, sitting nice and straight. Now they are. <laughs> again, the third one just goes in here. Again, I don't know about you, but I think if these are off centre or these aren't sitting straight, it's going to look absolutely terrible. And it's the first thing people will notice. They won't notice the fine detail in the cranes. They won't notice... The fact that you've put all this effort into getting the windows right. They won't notice the wee mod I made there on the smoking room or whatever that bit is. I can't remember now. They will notice that these pillars are squint though. So just make sure they're in straight. To avoid any embarrassment. <laughs> don't even know if you would call it embarrassment. But that's certainly that's the kind of thing that, that people do pick up on. As if the pillars aren't sitting straight. And as I say, they won't then go into the indent on the bottom of the boat deck. Again. Put that one in there. Line it all up. I do wish they were tighter. A tighter fit. So you knew it was straight. But it's it's not difficult to, to eyeball it. And again... I don't use too much glue, I use enough to hold it, but not enough that if I have to adjust it later, I can. But that's them all in. And that one's a wee bit off, so I'll adjust it quickly. Perfect. And that's us looking. That is now how the back of the promenade deck looks with the two cranes and all the, the pillars in. Fantastic really really impressed with with how that's looking now so that's us for issue 94 what's coming in issue 95 a big old chunk of keel <laughs> but we'll talk about that when it comes so yeah thanks for watching as always any feedback comments criticisms complaints drop them below do leave me a like and do subscribe to see the rest of titanic as well as the u-boat and anything else that comes along just finally that again that's what it looks like now I, I do really like these cranes i think they're fantastic but yeah thanks as always for watching and as usual guys peace out